Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to begin our discussion of graphs. Graphs are a sort of data structure that will show up all throughout classes you take in the future. Most commonly, and now in modern computer science, you'll likely see them in things like machine learning. They're in some sense the foundation of a lot of machine learning, but they show up in things like social networks or other problems where you kind of try to shoehorn them in. We're going to begin by talking about a bunch of definitions, starting with what is a graph? There's a definition we have here. I could read it off for you. The way that we typically understand graphs, not sort of with some formal definition, though, we usually think about it almost in terms of a picture. So a graph is something that contains vertices and edges. Vertices are going to be represented by some shape drawn circles, squares, triangles. We usually will use circles. So you have a bunch of vertices. I'm drawing these all as circles. So those circles are called vertices and they are connected by edges. So we connect some of these vertices via edges. Edges mean lines between them. Those lines can be straight lines. They can be curved lines. Those lines can cross if they need to. They can be any number of things that you do with a graph. So we have vertices, which correspond to the circles, and edges, which correspond to the lines. Sometimes the vertices, the circles, are also called nodes. If you've dealt with trees in the past, that's likely a more common phrase that you will have used there. So we have vertices and we have edges. We're going to associate some labels with these vertices so we can distinguish them from each other. So we'll call one V1 for vertex 1, vertex 2, vertex 3, vertex 4, vertex 5, vertex 6, vertex 7, and vertex eight. Which those are some abstract names. In practice, these usually have meaning to you. So the sort of classic example that's easy to visualize is something like connecting airports. So you, each vertex could represent an airport where a line would connect if there is a flight between those airports. So you might have LaGuardia, Newark, I think it's EWR. There's Columbus, CMH. There might be LAX, and there might be SFO. There might be Dallas-Fort Worth, which uh, I don't remember what that one is. So we're not going to write it down, but we have these ones. So we have LaGuardia and Columbus. There's flights to both of them. There's likely flights between them. Those are huge airports. There's probably flights between those. I don't think we have flights from Columbus to uh, LA or San Francisco, but there's probably one from LaGuardia to both of those as well. I know there's at least one from LaGuardia to San Francisco. I have taken that flight before, and I think there's also one to L.A. Uh, Newark also probably goes to SFO, and then you can visualize it this way. And then you can ask lots of questions like, is there a direct flight from somewhere to another place? What is the cheapest possible way I can get between them? Which is a sort of algorithm that gets run all the time if you go to Google Flights or Kayak or Expedia or whatever other website decides to compute this. So these graphs often have meaning. There are billions of applications of graphs, so we're not going to go into all of them, but this is sort of a classic, easy example to imagine. You can visualize actually such this, this graph actually exists, and you can Google the connecting flights graph, and then you'll find it. You can probably find even more data on the typical cost for those flights or the distances or the mileage and try to find out even more information about those flights. If you look at the actual definition, which we haven't talked about in specifics yet, you'll notice that it says V is a set of vertices and E is a set of edges. What that means is that we can actually write these things out as sets. So we could write V is equal to, and we'll have V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, V7, and V8. So they're stored as a set. And then there is also the set of edges. We'll write some of these, but not all of them, just to showcase our point. We have E is equal to the set, and it's going to contain every single edge is represented as a pair. So there's an edge between V1 and V2. So write that as V1 comma V2. You could argue, does V2 comma V1 exist in there? We'll deal with that a little bit more later. For now, we're just going to say V1, V2, and it's the same as V2, V1. So that is an edge that exists. There's also V1, V5. There's also V1, V8. There's also V2, V3, if I can read. V2, V4. 
and a whole bunch more, which we're not going to list all of them. So there's a bunch of these. You could list them all out, all of the ordered pairs. We will come back to this idea later when we actually are talking about how do you represent a graph in a computer. But for now, we could list all those out. It's more interesting when we talk, can talk about how this is represented in the computer, because it turns out that this representation we have here is not necessarily ideal. And we'll see sort of why that is later. So we have a set of vertices and a set of edges. There's a bunch of other common definitions. We'll talk about a couple of them here. So the t words that we use with a graph, there's lots of them, which is part of why this is going to be dense with definitions. The first thing we're going to talk about is adjacent vertices. A vertex is adjacent to another vertex, like V1 and V2, if there is an edge between them. So if there's a line that connects two vertices, they are adjacent. That's not horribly surprising. Adjacent means next to, and if there's an edge that connects them, they're next to each other in some sense. Similarly, an, an edge is incident on a vertex if it is one of the endpoints. So this edge V1, V2 is incident on v1 and is incident on v2. So it's adjacent, which refers to two vertices, and there's incident, which refers to an edge and a vertex. There's also something called the degree of a vertex, which tells you a surprising amount about the graph. The degree is the number of vertices that are adjacent or equivalently, the number of edges which are incident on that vertex. So I'm going to in blue write the vert, the degree of each thing. It's just the number of lines that touch it. So V1 has degree 3, V2 has degree 3, V3 has degree 4, V4 has degree 4, V5 has degree 3, V6 has degree 3, V7 has degree 3, and V8 has degree 3. That's kind of neat. We just have a whole bunch of vertices of degree 3 and 4. You could have incredibly lopsided vertices, and you can actually even have vertices which are entirely isolated. So in this graph on the left, I could theoretically move it over here to the left and add in more vertices like V9 and V10, which are over here and are entirely disconnected, but are part of that same graph still. So I would add in to my list of vertices V9 and V10, and they're not directly connected in any way to the other vertices. You could even add in another vertex V11, which has zero degree that is equally valid as well. So if I update my set of vertices again, we're going to get V11 there. And you can keep adding to these over and over and over again. This is some examples of graphs and a couple of definitions. The exact definitions I mentioned are down here. We have adjacent, incident, and degree. These are some of the most common ones that will show up. There's going to be a whole bunch more of these. The, intuitively in English, they should mostly make sense. So they maybe are less frightening than they might seem at first.